You know, uh, this was one of the first stories I did on this channel. And, you know, it was real short and basic. And I, would, I was just kind of learning the whole YouTube, social media thing. So, you know, this time around, I want to get a little deeper into the story of the beautiful and talented Natina Reed from the girl group Black. Great trio. There's a lot of, there were a lot of great uh, trio girl groups. And I definitely think Black is up there. You know, I always felt that the group Black was very underrated and could have been as big as Destiny's Child in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And they used to call, you know, they used to call Black a little version of TLC. <laughs> TLC Jr., to be exact. But that was Left Eye's group. They were her babies. She built that group around Natina Reed. Black considered themselves an urban pop group, not just R&B, though. You know, I think um, if Lisa Lopez would have never had died in that car accident, the group Black would have been bigger because she was the group's mentor. She taught them the business and everything. Their style was different. The beats and sounds they used, the way they dressed and everything was just different. And, you know, they came out at a time with a lot of other talented girl groups was out like Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child's were their label mates. 702, 3LW, and many more. I went back and listened to their music recently while working on this episode, and Black put out, Black put out some great music, man. And... What's crazy is they really only put out one official album together. But Natina Reed was the special one, though. She was special. She wrote most of their songs. She was a singer. She rapped. She was an actress. Came up with the fashion they wore and everything. I really wanted to hear a, Natina's, a Natina Reed solo album. I wanted to hear an album from her. And I heard her and Left Eye were supposed to be doing an album together before she died. I just think losing Left Eye, though, man, just left Natina and the group so heartbroken they just couldn't recover. And then losing Natina the same way? Let's get into the story, man. Now, Natina Reed was born on October 28th, 1980 in Queens, New York, but ended up moving to Atlanta, Georgia by the age of four years old. And from the start, she had big dreams of becoming something big. She, she wanted to do it all. She wanted to be Miss America, a veterinarian, a movie star, a lawyer, a musician, like Michael Jackson, that was her idol, you name it. She was focused at a very young age on her goals. Which, you know, led to her parents getting her into fashion and modeling. You know, she did some advertising campaigns for Macy's and Bloomingdale's. And she did commercials. She did, a, she did like a hot dog commercial. Plus, she did some acting for some shows too. But she loved music though. She loved that music and would play the drums and do plays at her uncle's and father's church. Now, around the age of 10 years old, in the fifth grade, she ended up meeting Shamari, who later on became part of the group Black, but we're going to get to that a little bit later, right? But Shamari said in an interview that even back then, people were impressed by Natina's talent, and she came to school like a superstar. You know, they became good friends and even formed an urban country singing group with two other girls called Boots. But, you know, Natina's parents pull her out of the group because they were very religious and didn't want her to do secular music at that time but you know Shamari said Natina, her and Natina was bad in school, always getting into trouble, they had to be separated and put into two different classes but you know uh, years down the line Shamari ended up forming another group and Natina she continued pursuing her dream of being a mega star and started writing rhymes and poetry and singing songs. Every day, they say she would write songs while beatboxing and banging on the walls. And, you know, she ended up entering a contest doing some jingles, and she won. She had did some jingles for the Sprite Soda 
and the Now and Later Candy Company. And after she won that contest, she was kind of stuck on how to take her career to the next level. At that age, she was still young. So around the age of 13 years old, she ended up meeting Ronald Lopez, who was the brother of Lisa Left Eye Lopez from the group TLC. Because see, Ronald Lopez, he recognized her talent and wanted to sign her to his company called Black House Productions. You know, when he introduced her to Left Eye, Left Eye loved Natina too. She loved Natina's style because it reminded her of herself. The combination of rapping and singing and she wanted Natina, she wanted Natina to help write for TLC. But yeah, though, Left Eye was blown away by her skills and thought she was very talented and wanted to help her to try to get a record deal. She wanted to build a group around Natina's talent. And that's when she told her, she told Natina to go find some other girls who could sing the songs that she was writing. And that's when Natina called Shamari and convinced her to leave the group that she was part of at the time called Intrigue. And Shamari brought in Brandy Williams, who was also part of the Intrigue, that group Intrigue, to complete the new trio group they was making. And they called themselves Black Ivory, but Black for short, which stood for Believe, Life, Achieving, Quest, Unity, and Everything. Because see, at the time, Ronald Lopez, he was still involved with the group. That's where the name Blacks, that's where the name Black come from, his production company called Black House. And at the time, when the three girls, Shamari, Brandy, and Atina, had just got together, you know, they had also met Michael Bivens, too, from the group New Edition on their Home Again tour. And he wanted to sign them to his label. But that's when Left Eye just to kind of took over the group. Left Eye just took the group from her brother Ronald and started working with them. And Left Eye, Left Eye had already knew Shamari and Brandy from seeing them in talent shows and auditions all around Atlanta over the years. And, you know, they was young when they signed too, man. When they signed the deal, when they got with Left Eye, Natina, Shamari was like 16 and Brandy was like 14 years old. And Left Eye, she kept her promise and signed them to her company called Left Eye Productions and six months later she got them a deal with the legendary producers called Trackmasters which at the time had a deal on Sony and Columbia Records with Tommy Mottola they actually they actually auditioned for Tommy Mottola and he signed them on the spot on the strength of Left Eye and on May 19th 1999 they released their self-titled debut album which ended up going certified platinum and sold over 1.5 million copies. The single though, 808, certified platinum. It was a hit. It hit number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 and number four on the Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Singles chart. And you know, a lot of people don't know that Natina Reed and R. Kelly wrote that song together. And you know, they said working with R. Kelly was great, but you know, he liked to work at nighttime, like, in the morning, all the way to the mornings and stuff. Now, the 808 remix was written by Candy Bears from the group Escape. That was kind of dope too. It's over that sample of LL Cool J's uh, Going Back to Cali song. Now, when it came to the second single though, I Do, that was written by Natina. And it did okay on the charts. It hit number 73 on the R&B Hip Hop Singles chart. But the video was nominated for an MTV Video Music Award. But see, the third single is the one that everybody loved called Bring It All To Me, featuring JC from the group NSYNC. And that hit number one on the U.S. Rhythmic Billboard charts for six weeks and number five on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 charts. Justin Timberlake was supposed to be featured on that song, but he was busy doing a movie at the time, so that's why JC from the group NSYNC was featured on there. Black and the group NSYNC were very close because they had the same manager, which was Johnny Wright. Plus, that video, Bring It All To Me, won a Billboard Video Award. And if y'all love old school music like I do, y'all probably know that that song actually was a sample 
from the group Shalimar's 1982 single called I Don't Wanna Be The Last To Know off their platinum album, Friends. But you know, the Black album was dope though, man. Even, even Mariah Carey had written a song on the album too. And you know, with Left Eye as their mentor and guide in the group, plus Sony Columbia Records backing them, they was on fire at that time. They went on tour with NSYNC all around the world. Actually, <laughs> before they even put the album out, they was the opening act for NSYNC. But they went on tour with NSYNC and then they became the opening acts for the TLC's fan mail tour that same year. They was on a Nickelodeon tour hosted by Nick Cannon. I mean, they was on fire. You know, then more opportunities came when they was asked to be in the movie called Cheer Fever, which later was changed to Bring It On, as members of the East Compton Clovers cheerleading squad with Gabrielle Union. They didn't even have to audition for the movie. <laughs> and the movie was a hit, box office hit, grossed over $90 million. Wow, that's crazy. They said, uh, cheerleaders love that movie so much that they would dress up in the Clover's uniforms for Halloween. And you know, for the soundtrack to the movie, they had the song on there called As If, and they did a remix for the song, Bring It All To Me, featuring 50 Cent. 50 Cent was on a remix of Bring It All To Me. A lot of people don't know that though, that 50 Cent was signed to Track Masters too, before he got with Eminem and Dr. Dre. But see, when he got shot nine times, he, he dropped it from the label. But anyway, Black also did a song called You Can Always Go with the R&B group Jagged Edge for the Big Mama House movie soundtrack, Martin Lawrence movie. I mean, at that time, Black was on fire. One of the hottest girl groups out at that time. Now, with all that success and platinum hits, you know, rumors started circulating that the group were having some issues amongst each other and was about to break up, but they ended up straightening everything out and got back to work. Now, also around that time, Latina and Corrupt from the Dog Pound started dating. And a lot of people don't know that before she dated Corrupt, she had dated Mike from the R&B group 112 for years. But anyway, so she started dating Corrupt after Left Eye introduced them to each other years before and later on they got engaged and in 2001 Natina was featured on corrupt single called it's over from his third album titled space boogie smoke odyssey supposedly uh some people say it was a diss to corrupt's ex-girlfriend <laughs> rapper foxy brown and you know what foxy brown she dissed Natina. She dissed Natina on a song called 730 from her 2001 album called Broken Silence. You know what's crazy is uh, even Left Eye had beef with Foxy Brown over Andre Riser. I guess she accused Foxy and Andre doing something, but I know Foxy Brown and Andre Riser got a song together called Burning the House Down. Wow, that's crazy. But anyway, Black. You know, Black were also featured on a song called Head in the Sky, which was on Left Eye's debut studio album titled Supernova. I don't know if y'all heard that album from Left Eye called Supernova. It's on YouTube. Y'all want to check it out. Spotify. Now, after that, right, Black, you know, they started working on their second album titled Blackout. And on that album, they had worked with the group Full Force. But around that time, you know, Natina ended up getting pregnant by Corrupt which kind of, you know, slowed the album up. But then they had to face the tragedy of when they lost their mentor. Lisa Left Eye Lopez ended up dying in a car crash in Honduras, which still bothers me to this day, man. It's crazy. It's just, it's just because she was, she was the only one that died in that car, man. <laughs> Seven other people was in that car and lived. Egypt was in that car. Her brother was in that car. Her sister was in that car. Two other producers, they all survived except Left Eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, when she died, man, and Tina was devastated. 
and just lost because they had plans when Left Eye was on Death Row Records. When she was with, when she was calling herself Nina, her and Nina and the Tina was about to drop a bunch of music together. She wanted to do a rap album with Natina. But, you know, the whole world was just devastated when that happened, man. To be honest, man, the group Black said they just kind of lost their passion for singing at that point. Now, Natina said in an interview that she was living with Left Eye and Cali. That's when Left Eye and Suge Knight was dating. I don't know if y'all remember that. You know, she had a baby shower there and everything. And, you know, she, she lived with Left Eye. When she was pregnant just months before she died and you know she said left eye took good care of her while she was pregnant left eye was the son's godmother her son's godmother it was just a rough time man for natina and the, and the group because the record label didn't want to replace her with another member because she was pregnant you know columbia was tripping columbia records didn't want to promote or market an artist that was pregnant in which during that time was a bad look in the industry. Now you pregnant, you can have a baby, whatever. But back then, it was a bad look to be pregnant and doing music, whatever. Plus, they felt like if Natina isn't going to be in the group, they didn't want the group. But they did let them release that single, Can't Get It Back, which is a great song. I love that song. And Natina's verse was crazy on that, on that on song, man. So the second album, right, somehow it got leaked online. So that's when the label decided to just release it over in Japan. And they shelved it in America. And then they dropped them from the label. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, later on in 2007, they released the Blackout album on iTunes. It came out on iTunes, but it was later taken down. But then it put back up on iTunes around December 2011. But by then, I mean, the buzz is gone. But the album was great. I really believe that album would have made a big impact for them and took them to the top. That was a great album. Check it out when y'all can. And, you know, Natina, at that time, she released a solo song called Rock Climber from the Dragonfly Presents A Better Life Through Chemistry compilation album around that time also so you know after getting dropped by columbia records and the tina had had her baby boy everybody was trying to sign them though now they was free agents it was actually a bidding war between virgin records and electro records but they ended up signing with sylvia rome at electro records who was dealing with missy at the time you know sylvia rome had offered them the most money Natina was the one that made that deal happen for them. She flew out to New York to Electric Records. She talked to Sylvia Rome and got them the record deal. Natina got them the deal. Plus, they started being managed by Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles at that time. Hmm. Quick side note, too. You know, former Destiny's Child member Farrah Franklin is Natina's cousin. But anyway, so they started working on that third album now. New deal. They got a new record deal. They started working on their third album titled Torch. And they also released a song called I'm Good, which was the lead single for the movie soundtrack called Honey, starring Jessica Alba and Makai Pfeiffer. But that third album, Torch, never got released. They did all that work. They did work with Missy Elliott, Dark Child. It just never got released couple reasons that album never came out now according to brandy williams she said that sylvia rome was leaving electric records at the time and going to universal motown and that's one reason another reason i think natina was going through a hard some hard times man natina decided she didn't want to do secular music anymore at that time she wanted to go to the gospel genre so after that third album torch didn't come out and the new staff came and took over the label, they got dropped again. Wow. Black got dropped again for the second time. And like I said, when Natina decided to lead the group and go back to the church and do gospel, they had replaced her with another singer called, her name was Erica Pullins 
for a little while. They had her in there. Erica Pullins took her place and performed with the group overseas, but they never recorded any material together. But then after that, everybody just went their separate ways. They all went to pursue their solo careers. Shamari had signed with Dark Child Records and Brandy Williams signed a solo deal and she did the hook. Brandy Williams did the hook on Nelly's number one platinum hit called Grills. That was a big song. But I really believe that Natina went back to church because she was going through so much, man. Imagine, she lost left eye, her and Corrupt, they broke up. She had just had a baby. Plus, she was dealing with the music industry itself could drive you crazy. She went back to church. But then around 2005, the group got back together and started working on an album called Private Show. You know, in 2007, a compilation album came out called Black by Popular Demand, which had about 10 songs on that. Now, around 2008, they had put out a trailer for their reality show called Black in the House, which documented their lives as well as the recording of their brand new album they was doing. But they just never saw the light of day. The album never came out. They had a trailer for the reality show. At that point, I think everybody just had so much going on in their personal lives. It just never happened because they was going to have to live with that reality show they was doing. They was going to have to live with T-Bys at her house and everything. And it was just, they had to do a bunch of stuff. And I think they just really didn't have enough time to commit to it. Now, after that, you know, Natina, I guess, would go through some rough times. According to some websites online, Bossup.com, they said she ended up being arrested around April 2010 and charged with cocaine possession, disorderly conduct, and prostitution. But that's when her camp, Natina's camp, responded back and said she was only charged with violating the open container laws and disorderly conduct. So that blog had lied about that cocaine and prostitution charge. Wow. Man. Then they said she caught another DUI again, reckless driving and driving without a valid Georgia license after her license was revoked. But then on July 28th, 2012, Black got back together and reunited for the Left Eye Musical Festival in Decatur, Georgia. They also was working on new material for a new album and Natina was working on her solo album. In an interview, you know, Natina said she was more, she was really focused on more acting at that time. She wanted to do more acting and doing plays. But on October 26, 2012, just two days before her birthday, Natina was hit and killed by a car. Now, the story goes, they say that she was living in an extended stay motel and I guess she was either walking on the side or crossing the road in a real dark area and she was wearing dark clothing and she got hit by a car. She was struck by a vehicle. Now, at first they was trying to say that it was a hit and run but then later confirmed that the driver and the passenger in that car stopped and called 911 to report the accident and they performed CPR on Natina they performed CPR on her but she was later pronounced dead at the hospital hours later and the driver of that car that hit hit her wasn't charged he wasn't charged because he thought he had hit a deer but you know they called the police they tried to help Natina you know the police said that that area is kind of a dark lit area there's not really anything in that area that's open at that time of night that would that would be any kind of a draw to a person up there. Now, Natina's parents spoke out. You know, they said um, she was on the phone when she was walking across the street and believed it played a big part in her getting hit by that car. They also said that that motel was not her permanent address. She was in a transition about to move into a new home. 
sad part is, man, she was just about to celebrate her birthday that Sunday. And she died that Friday. Mm, 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 mm. Two days before her birthday. You know, corrupt. Her ex-fiance corrupt. Paid for a funeral. And a lot of her industry friends and family attended like, you know, you know, Black, the members of Black, Shamari and Brandy, Chili and T-Boz, Big Boy from Outkast, Snoop. Snoop was there and many more. You know, uh, just about a year later, though, well, about 10 months later, after the after the death of Natina, her family had to face more bad news when her sister, Naisha Stevens, was found dead in her home by her seven-year-old daughter. Wow. It's just crazy, man, because I just think back, you know, left eye, car accident, and Natina got hit by a car. Wow. And they were so close, man. They was very close. I know her fam. You know, her family and friends used to celebrate uh, her birthday every year. I don't know if they still do that. You know, they used to give away a Natina Reed Award to somebody in the community that was doing something positive. So hopefully they still continue to celebrate her birthday every year. You know, the rest of the members, Shamari and Brandy, are still doing their thing, though. Shamari, you know, she married Ronnie DeVoe from the group New Edition and is now on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But they still touring. They still keeping Antina and the group Black's name alive. You know, it's just the two of them, I guess, performing. So you can never, you can't replace Natina. I guess it's just like TLC can't replace Left Eye. So they're just going to it keep it two people performing now. And, you know, they had released the album Torch back in 2019 for the fans to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Black. So I hope they um I hope they got some unreleased material on the on the Tina too they can put out in the future. Would love to hear some unreleased material from the Tina. I think uh the Tina's son, Trent, he's rapping now. He's rapping. I heard he's I heard he's pretty good too. I mean, his father corrupt from the dog pound got him, so I'm pretty sure. You know, look, with parents like that, talented parents like that, he's destined to be a superstar. So y'all make sure y'all support Trent on his journey in the music game. And hopefully somebody put out an official book about her life too. Or maybe Unsung could do an episode on the group Black. But I would love to see an official book on Latina. I think her story definitely needs to be told on a bigger level. That year, man, she died 2012. Man, a lot of people died. Whitney Houston, Donna Summer, Chris Lighty, Robin Gibb from the BGs, Chuck Brown, Go-Go Music Legend, DC, Don Cornelius died, Etta James, Adam Yacht from the Beastie Boys, and many more. 2012 was a rough year. Lost a lot of people. And of course, Natina Reed. Man, she was 32 years old. Rest in peace, Natina Reed. 